Hi, I'm Dan Sherwood. Please join me for another episode of Oregon Photographer. This week we'll be at Smith and Bybee Lakes Natural Area, one of the gems, one of the many gems in Portland, Oregon. Located off of North Marine Drive, access and parking are free. TriMet Bus 16 stops in front, early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Soon after we left the Marine Drive access point, the hum of traffic was quickly replaced by hummingbirds and other bird songs. Well, we didn't get very far into the refuge before we found a tiny hummingbird nest. Looks like a rufous hummingbird. Better capture this one. The rufous hummingbird flies farther north than any other hummingbird. Hummingbirds are generally feisty, but this species is particularly pugnacious. Hi. Hi. Have a good walk. What do you see? You see turtles? Yeah. Let's go find some turtles. Smith and Bybee Lakes are the country's largest protected urban wetland. At 2,000 acres, Smith and Bybee Wetlands Natural Area attracts a variety of birds in every season and is home to beavers, river otters, and one of Oregon's largest remaining populations of western painted turtles. Although we arrived during midday, which is usually a prime time for viewing painted turtles, there were none to be found. Luckily, a great blue heron was feeding in the shallow slough. This shy but powerful bird spears fish or catches them by using its bill like scissors. A great blue heron may slowly stalk its prey or stand motionless waiting for something to come within reach. Today's DSLR cameras usually come with a strap, but windy conditions can cause the strap to flap around, thereby creating the possibility for camera movement. I like the option of being oh, able to remove one. it in a jib, so that's why I use a small carabiner Excellent. to attach and quickly unattach the strap from the camera. Okay, it sees something, it's winding up. I go, egg scored! This natural area is the largest protected wetland within an American city, even though it is surrounded by port terminals, warehouses, and other commercial developments. Bybee Lake is 250 acres in area with a 5.9 mile shoreline. Smith Lake is even larger at about 600 acres with a 6.9 mile shoreline. The two lakes represent a huge natural area within the middle of a major industrial zone. Let's head on down to the big lake. I'm feeling pretty good about the day here. We spent most of our time at the pond, the viewing pond, the wildlife pond. And this is Bybee Lake here, one of the largest freshwater lakes in a municipal city in the United States. The Smith Lake is just that way behind us. But I think it's time to head back to the ranch and take a look at what we got today.
here we are back at the ranch. I'd like to end each week by presenting a few Photoshop tips. So let's get started. Fortunately, our time for the segment is limited, so we can only show a quick tip or two. As you saw in the video, we were on location at Smith & Bybee during the noon hour. Typically not the best time of day for photography, but it's a good time of day to be up and active. Many photo opportunities present themselves during midday, when the summer sunlight is overhead creating harsh shadows and strong contrast. In the film era, photographers simply wouldn't shoot during midday sunlight, preferring the warmer, more evenly balanced light of early morning and late afternoon. I'll show you a quick and simple curve that will help to mitigate strong contrast. So to get to your curve dialog box, go under the image, Photoshop image in the menu bar, click adjustments, and you'll find curves down there. The way I like to access it is by hitting on the Macintosh Command M or on a PC Control M to quickly pull up the curves dialog box. And you'll see I have mine set up into uh, four squares going from left to right. And I like that because it represents the uh, quarter tones, mid tones, and the three quarter tones. And you can easily see your white point and also where your black point is. What I need to do first is to lock down the, the center because we don't want to affect the mid tones. We just want to adjust the highlights. I want to pull down some of these highlights that you see in the bird and even in the background on the water. See if we can get a little more detail and color in there. Because I know that's not how the bird really looks, but due to the harsh sunlight, this is how it appears on film or on your sensor. And we'll place another point by clicking on that square and this will lock the rest of the curve in place because we just want to affect the quarter tone highlights which is this data right here. And we will just drag it down a little bit. Generally when working with curves if you steepen a curve make it more of a straight line it increases contrast as you can see, uh, the white area on the bird has it's blowing out even more. But we want to decrease contrast, so we'll slide it down and see what that did. I'll repeat that. This is how our original image is. A little loss of whoa, <laughs> a little loss of detail there in the bird, and we can restore some of that just by simply dragging down that curve. There it is. And we're back. Hit OK. And I'm going to do Command Z a couple times. That is undo and redo. So that was how we started. And that's what we ended up with. And if I wanted to go the extra step, I could make a localized selection of the bird, either with the lasso tool or the quick selection tool. And I'd pump up some of the saturation, the blue, although I brought some detail back in the feathers, uh, it looks, the color does look a little dull, but that is another step for another day.